G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, in this how-do, I'm going to show what has been requested by a lot of you, because you know I'm, I'm building a Spitfire at the moment, but you've requested some more information and some clarity on the insanity of making a paper mask to do the camo scheme. Now, I'm actually not doing quite that one, which is the, the instructions for this kit. I'm, I'm working on this one, the venerable old Academy Spitfire. Mark 14C, which is a lovely old kit. It's as old as Bloody Hills, but tell you what, it, um, it fits together beautifully. Anyhow, I'll do a video on the um, the whole construction of this. I've done a review on the kit, and it is lovely, and I've just about finished it. But anyhow, uh, what I'm going to do is I've bought these um, these masks because I wanted to do the um, this insignia. I didn't want to do the invasion stripes. I wanted to do a, a clean Spitfire. And I'd heard there, well, the thing is, if you're going to use the decals from the... Um, from the Academy kit, you are stuck with the insignia stripes, right? Or the invasion stripes, sorry. Because they're they're integrated in with the insignia, which is a bummer. So you can't have either or. So um, I needed therefore to get a mask for my um, for my insignia. And while I'm doing that, I thought, well, I'll use my same old technique, which is a paper floating mask for the camo. Now, I found a particularly nice design online that I liked, and I did a drawing. But um, let me tell you how, how you could do it, because the way I do things is always too bloody complicated. If you've got the instructions, you could scan them, and if they've got the, the painting guide with the um, with your markings on. And let's let's move to this one, say, because you've got more camo on this one. And you could um, scan this, and then basically, as long as you're smart enough, <laughs> oh, you should be able to do this, measure the width of your model in your computer, and then you need to scale up your drawing to fit. And you'll need at least a program that allows you to measure in inches, millimetres or cubits the, um, the size on the screen. So you know when you're printing it out, it's the right size. Or you can do trial and error and, um, you know, do one, print it out, make a bigger, print it out. <laughs> you could go on forever. You could do what I've done, which is because I've, I've got graphic skills and I'm quite happy to do this. I'll um, create a grid and I'll measure off the drawing and I'll work out a scale ratio. So I've got the figure on the drawing, there's the wingspan of the drawing, there's the wingspan I need for the kit and the fuselage length and so on. And I just worked out a ratio, it ended up being about 2.3. So I just did some, um, some multiplications to work out where the positions were for my camo and then a bit of artistic license in drawing it in how I wanted it. I actually didn't even use that exact camera scheme. I found another one online, which I think is the um, the, the B marking or something. And um, it's got a few more sort of wiggly lines and I really liked it. But it was apparently a, um, a camo pattern for a Mark 14. So that's what I'm going with. So what I've done then is I've drawn in all the camo lines. Now the wings are easy because they'll be exactly as per your drawing. And so you mark them in. You allow a little bit for where it's going to need to be overlapping because you don't want um, you don't want to sort of end and the paint to bleed underneath your spraying. So that's why these are now. What I've done is I'm be painting the lighter colour first, which will be the grey. So the grey is what I will mask out. The green will then be left exposed for the second run of paint, which will therefore give me my two colour camo. Now, when you come to the fuselage, it gets a bit trickier because if you just make that piece, well, it's only going to do the top and it won't go down the sides. And I sort of had this problem when I when I tried this first, doing the um, the P40. But I have a solution for that. I had, I had a bit of a think about it. Uh, mainly because I found masks online you could buy and saw what they were doing and went, oh, hang on, they're onto a bloody good thing here. So you start with a profile view and get your camo pattern worked on. And then a reverse the other side profile and mark it in. Then all you need really is the bits that join at the top, which You've already seen from this drawing, you already know roughly what they're going to look like. And so that's what I've got here. And I realise I'm just going to need that little bit extra, a little bit extra. And what I've done is I've done the left and the right side of the fuselage separate. Last time I made the big piece and then tried to wrap it over and it's a bit of a nightmare. But I noticed the um, masks available online, they do the either side separate and you just join the middle. So we'll give that a try. I believe then I should be able to wrap this around and then where it joins in the middle, I could tape that together and even then trim and get a nice perfect join. So hopefully that will allow me to get 
all I need. But as you can see, there's not a lot to this really. There'll only be one, two, three uh, pieces, and then one for the tail here. Well, basically, the, the tail here requires a few. And on the um, on the wings, I'm only going to need one, two, three on that side, one, two on that side. Uh, these are all going to be middle, middle, middle fuselage. And the tail, um, the, the elevators, one, two. There's really not a lot. There's about a dozen, I think. I think this goes up to 16 only because I was using the same numbering system as what I found online. Now, I could have bought these, but I think they were stick-on masks. And I don't want to do stick-on masks. I want to do the raised masks. So let me get on with it, and I'll show you how this is done and how easy it is, especially if, if you've managed to scan, enlarge, and print this out. Well, what took me an evening of drawing, which I enjoyed, you'll get done in five minutes. Well, if you've got computer skills. <laughs> And then it's just a matter of cutting out those Mars shapes. So um, let's do this now. There I have all the wing masks cut out. Now you notice, once they're out, they're just wiggly shapes. Luckily I've written on every one a number. But not only that, I made myself a little plan over here of which one goes where. Just in case I go, oh dear, and while I'm working on it, I can't remember where the jigsaw puzzles fit. So a bit of planning involved, but just number number all your sections and uh, you'll be fine. Now, I must apologise for that big, horrible Mickey Mouse glove. Um, the only reason I was wearing it is I had been... Uh, just protecting my Spitfire by putting a layer of hairspray on it. Yes, the um, the Spitfire got a bit hairy. Now the reason for that is I'm also trying out this um, new Steiner Res metal primer. That's a primer. Yep, it's um it's basically a metallic, almost aluminium coloured um, colour. Which I thought, well, that's what these planes were made of. If I prime it in that, cover it in hairspray, pull my camo on, I should be able to use my chipping method. Who knows, this may be an almighty disaster, but um, more of that another day. This video is primarily about um, doing this cow mask. So the next thing I need to do is um, get a coat of the, the lighter colour, which is the grey on this, and let that dry enough so that I can put the masks on and add the green to um, complete the camo. Didn't know what I was going to say there. I had a brain fart. Oh dear. It's, it's probably the hairspray fumes, yes. <laughs> not, not a person who uses hairspray, if you ever seen my photos, bald as a bandicoot. Anyhow, enough waffling, Harry Houdini. Let's get on with this. I'll get some, uh, some grey on that, and then we'll add the masks, and I'll show you how it's all done. Now, before we can get the paint on, we've, of course, got to mask the underside of the aircraft, because uh, that's a different colour. So, um, <laughs> I've now got my snappy little black glove on which is the one I use whenever I'm masking or holding the model. Because after you've finished building your model and then you've cleaned it all up, you know, usually I'll wipe all the shavings off and um, and even give it a light wipe down with some isopropyl hole or something. And um, the last thing you want is fingerprints. So from that moment on, I use these, um, these are actually doing Brazilian waxes. Yes, apparently is, um, they do work in Australia, although they're from Brazil. <laughs> You know what I mean. Um, but these are great. They're just little, I get about 100 for two shekels. And um, they're great. So um, the other thing I do is I've got a, a Tupperware container. It's a big lunchbox. And I'll cover my model whenever I'm walking away from it or leaving it overnight. Mainly because here there is so much bloody ball dust from those freaking cows. Um, yes, yeah, so I live on a farm. But anyway, you, you would get dust just about anywhere. So um, to protect my model um, while I'm working on it, I always cover them in these little um, lunch boxes. I've got a whole stack of the body things. Uh, so here we are. We've got the bottom masked up. Now I thought I'd just show you a few things. I've used three types of, um, of masking tape here. I've got the very thin bendy stuff, which is the um, it's, it's the Tamiya stuff for masking curves, and that's excellent for um, getting in and getting little curved edges done, like um, there, and also the um, that little yellow strip which I'd already masked up and painted, um, which I thought was a good idea to do now, being such a light colour. Didn't want the camo colours to interfere with it. So I've masked that up again with that stuff. It's lovely, stretchy stuff, but you can't leave it on forever. It's got a bit of a short um, shelf life, and then eventually it peels off, I've been warned. So I'll use that for curvy bits. So I've just used it there, and I've used it underneath here, 
where I needed a bit of a curved line. Then I'll come in with, um, well, I've got a straight edge. I've used my Tamiya tape, just good old venerable Tamiya tape, yellow stuff. But then while, rather than waste this this stuff, which is not cheap, you know, this, this stuff is about a shekel or two for a roll. Whereas this blue thing, I've got this um, this, this blue here. That's just painter's, painter's tape. Here it's 3M and I'll, I'll get it from my big hardware store, Bunnings. And uh, for about a shekel, I get enough to last me almost a year. So I will use that and slather it everywhere where I'm just covering surfaces. I won't waste my good stuff. And then once that's all on, I trim back those little edges. And I've got two scissors here. I've got one for doing straight edges. And then I've got some nail cutting scissors here, which I've cleaned the scummy nail jam off. And I use that for cutting into um, the little corners, round bits. And also, wherever you join where there's a right angle, um, and you've taped underneath, it's always best to cut a little V in. Cut a little V in because um, otherwise I've found if you leave that little bit that's overlapping, somehow you're spraying away, well, not somehow exactly, you end up with a little um, area that ghosts underneath there and you sort of miss it. You're spraying away and because that little bit sticks out, the paint doesn't get in there. Okay, it's all grey. That's the uh, correct um, grey for ocean grey or something like that. I don't know. It's the crack grey that I want anyway for the camo scheme. And now we've got to basically get those masks on. This is still curing, so I've got time to build these. <laughs> now I'm going to need a lot of these. I'm going to need at least one or two for every piece. So there's about a dozen different pieces. I'll make a couple of dozen of those. Now they're not hard to make. And, and they're what you're using those for is to suspend the mask off the kit. And that's the whole trick with this, is that you're airbrushing with a floating mask. It gives a beautiful edge. Anyway, to make these, I use this, um, this is a paintbrush I've got that's just the right height. And that will allow me to consistently make um, a whole lot of these little things. Of course, you want them sticky side out. So I've got the tape down there. I just roll them across until they're um, basically adhered. Bang! Right, that one's done, sort of, nearly. Yeah, it's okay. Yep. And moving right along. This always goes better, so much better in rehearsals. <laughs> but um, these aren't hard to make, really. Probably give it just a little more of a roll. I probably should leave the tube on. There we go. Got to squash that bit down. Oh, I've forgotten how to do them. It's been a while. Well, the idea of of using this um, this paint brush can't think of work at the same time. Um, the reason I'm using this paint brush is so that it's consistent. I want every single one of my masks to sit exactly the same height off the kit, right? Because it's no point one being really high, one being really low. They'll be they'll be all sort of different levels of spray. I want it so that it, it gives a pretty sharp line, but it's um it's got that tiny feathered edge that I uh, that I'm looking for. So there we go. You roll them off, it's easier. So I'll just keep working with these. As I've got to make um, nearly made half a dozen now. I'm just going to make uh, a couple of dozen of these, and then I'll um, show you how we add them to the um, the model. It should be pretty well tacked dry, and and if I'm careful, I can start adding those masks. Finally, moment of truth. This is what we're leading up to. I know there's a lot of preparation. Preparation is what it's all about. So I've got my um, my map, so I know what's going on, and I'm about to start. Now you'll notice all the time I've been working with a piece of white paper, as well as my glove. Once I have a model in painted stage and I don't want any more dust or rubbish on it, I actually use a brand new piece of um, printer paper to sit it on, so that I know it hasn't got any gunk sticking to the bottom of it. Right. I know even though that's got tape on it, still gunk will travel and hairs and things, especially when you've got cats. So the cleaner the environment, the better. Now, the very first um, bit of camo we'll put on the wing, uh, we'll do number two because that's got to go from there to there. And I can also check with my um, with my bigger, if I've got the proper larger drawing, I'll check with that, but I know where that one goes. So I'll, I'll get onto that now. First we'll do a dry fit, just like you do with everything else. All right, so I know it's got to go over that edge a bit, and I know it has to, check in my diagram, just comes in on the wing. So it is there. 
that's exactly where it goes okay so that's not too bad so it's basically going to butt up to um, I was just going to go over that line so that's where I want it okay so I need a couple of these little guys and you'll notice here that um, that stretchy bendy tape is lifting already we're going to have to keep an eye on that because that, um, that could be a problem so again I know that comes in just over there I know it's got to be level there so that's basically it and those little bits of um, rolls of tape they've now suspended that exactly those few millimeters about five millimeters above there now on the side here that's going to go up and across I've got pieces for that that will join but for now I'll just add Actually, I'll need to go that way because I have to follow the contours of the plastic. Oh, that's not good, is it? Well, that's not working, is it, Harry? No. Again, this is a bit. Um, just got to make sure you keep it. There we go. That's what that's got to go. Won't worry about that for the time being. I'll wait till I go over the side. So I've got a little piece here that's got to go along here and um, that's where it goes right there so that's that one that one's going right up there so it's only going to need one and it comes in just from the tip just there like so so it's handy so if you don't draw that little edge bit you don't know where you've got to line it up on the wing. I mean, well, don't be too stressed because basically camo schemes are pretty flexible anyway. They, um, I think they would have had big rubber masks or something and they actually spray painted them on, I believe so. Now number six has got to go in there. So number six, now also you can see the, the fuse large parts there as well. So I know basically number six is just about got to bend there and it's going to go up again I oh know yep that's it it's gonna sit right there so again and watching the contours of what you're working on because no point trying to put a piece of bloody roll that way it's not going to go in you'd have to put it that way so you've got to be very aware of what are the contours of what you're working on if you're going to do this or make much smaller tubes you can do that you can cut the tubes in half which is which is all doable all right so again that's on the join line that goes there that's there the thing about this is only just sitting there now you may well ask after the discussion before about using um, painters tape when you're doing big areas and not wasting your Tamiya tape yes probably could do this painter tape but this paint has only been on there about half an hour it's dry it's it's okay but if it had too vigorous of a um, something sticky on it it could easily lift i don't want that that'd be a disaster at this stage so i'm going with tamiya tape which i know is not going to wreck my model and that's you know that's what i want that's what i what i need i need to be certain at this point that all this hard work is not going to end in tears right so all the way along there i'll probably end up trimming some of that off because we do have the top piece to go on there but that's just position for the moment to give me an idea all right, well, um, we'll do a bit more and then I'll do a joining piece to show you. Um, just talk amongst yourselves. Smoke them if you've got them. Oh, I can't say that anymore, can you? No. I'm not allowed to say that anymore. No, you're getting in trouble. You're getting in bloody trouble, Harry. If you say that sort of shit, mate. Uh, all right, so this one sits on the wing exactly there. Again, I've studied my my camo so charts I know it and even if it is slightly wrong I'll check this afterwards even if it is slightly wrong these are easy enough to lift and reposition but um, that one goes around that way oh, it's all it's all a bloody jigsaw puzzle that's there this, and then this yeah this actually could cover that horrible lift there in fact oh, I'll retape that but I'll put this up for the time being because that is annoying the way that's lifted. And that's what I've been warned about this, this, um, this particular stretchy bendy tape. It's all very well, 
but it does have a tendency to lift on you. There we go, that's got it back in position. Okay, we might be all right. But yes, that um, bendy tape's all good, but you wouldn't want to leave it on there for a week <laughs> and it all falls off, especially under hot lights and the conditions I'm working out here. It's, um, it's going to get loose. Right, so where were we? That had to go on there, that had to go to there. Again, because I've got all my little sketchy liney things. And I'm only touching my finger on the underside, which is already taped. So I hope you can see that. I hope I'm going off camera because I'm really concentrating. But again, all of those are suspended at exactly the right height. So that one's wobbling over a bit. There we go. Okay, well, I'll double check them all anyway. And that means if I spray at exactly the right angle, all the way through and I'm consistent, I will get exactly that pattern with a nice crisp little edge with a gentle feather on it. Okay, uh, we'll just do, say, this piece over here, which is five and one. All right, so going to my pie, we'll do number one. Number one's interesting because it goes across from there to there. So number one, So basically, what I could do here is, let's see how it fits. It's actually got a nice little curve in there. And then it should join to there. So actually, that's, that's much nicer. So I actually don't need all of that. So I'll remove that. What I've got is much nicer. And this is where the fiddly bit comes in, because you don't know until you get to this stage how they're going to join together. So I don't need him, but what I need is that. And that should go to the centre there. Comes up from there. And I need even less of the paper. So there's a little bit of um, a little bit of fiddling involved. Okay, now I can put some tape on this one. It's probably going to need a few. Again, don't go that way because everything's this way. So let's have a look. So we'll put one there, put one here, and we'll definitely need one further along for the overlap. Although I may end up taking that off. So checking my drawing, which I've got off camera, you can't see. Um, that has to be in front of... So just checking, double checking, yeah that kind of wobbles around here, goes like that. Okay, so it's all just all. Now whether they like this, I'm going to have to come in there and put a little bit of tape and I'll actually join those two together so they fold into each other. Um, I'll actually usually put a bit of um, sticky tape here so that things join to things and that way that'll lift that one but that's okay I'll come back to that so it's all a fiddliness now I need the piece one that was piece no I need piece five getting back to front here piece five okay piece five is um that way yeah so piece five actually doesn't do much at all it just goes off there down there to there so that would actually join very well in fact it wants to wants to stick on there straight away so piece five is going to be one of the easiest ones because contour was pretty well spot on so there we go and again what i'll need to do is just tape that to there so i'll do that with some solid tape i'd rather do this off camera and i've got more room to see what i'm doing but um for you now, I'll just illustrate what I would do. So, I'd do a better job of it. <laughs> so you're across here, because the trick is we don't want any sticky tape on the model. Oh no, that would be horrible. Okay, so that joins to there. And we can tighten that up with some tweezers, because again, everything's suspended. So to convince that, Come on, you little bastard. That's it. That's where you got to go. Okay. 
Now that we've got it like that, I'm coming with my tiny little nail trimmers. And so the hardest part is the join across the fuselage. That's um, that's where you think, oh dear, you know, goodness me. So doing as good a job as I can, I'll probably go back and get an eagle eye on this when you're not looking. Okay, so that's sort of it. Might need a little bit tidier. But now that piece is conforming. And the same in here, when I want to join that, again, I'll use the tape. You could use your low-tack tape. It might be safer, um, especially if you're um, worried about getting stickiness on the model, which you should be. Oh, let me get in closer. This is, this is a fiddly bit. So... And again, you want to get in because you want to keep that profile. Sort of like that. Okay. Well, look, uh, I'll turn the camera off and get the rest of this done because it is a tricky thing to do when you've an iPad in your face. But um, the flat surface is not that hard. You work your way. It's just this this piece across here can be tricky, but we've got lots of bits cut out. So because I've got both the side, I've, I've done it from the um, from the plan view as well as the profile view, and I've got both sides, I show enough pieces to make that correct shape up. So, all right, I'll keep going, and we'll come back when this is fully masked. There we go. It's taken me probably close to an hour to do all of that. Um, probably would have been faster if I wasn't doing the video. But um, some of the pieces are really easy to put on, you know. Uh, this piece here, with the join here, I found it was better to dry fit both the sides, those two, because I had one section there, one section there, until I worked out where they joined. They actually joined perfectly on the, the line anyway. Then I took them off the model, as I hadn't fixed them, sellotaped up the join and trimmed it exactly. Then it was much easier to put back on and form the shape. So there we go. So everything's... Everything's in place and everything's floating. And as long as you're spraying perpendicular every time, the masks work. Because, I mean, yes, you can see a bit of sticky there, but when you spray, spray, Harry, put your teeth back in, when you spray perpendicular, everything's fine. Now, there's a little bit of skullduggery here because that's why I was having, it was probably the worst example to show, was that join there was probably the hardest because in the end I ended up having to cut into it to fold that piece down and then tape that up. But anyhow, it's all done. Every piece is in place. I also um, put some Tamiya tape on those tips there where those um, yellow stripes are because that, that bandy tape was lifting. It just kept lifting. It's um, Be wary of that. It has a very short period of time when it's actually going to stay somewhere, especially if it's got quite a bend. So there we go. That's, that's all in there. Curves are done. Everything's done. This part here was a bit tricky because I had to... My piece actually went across the, um, the, the rear... Um, stabilizer there so I had to um, actually cut it in half and then join it back together again but look it's um it is all doable and you just got to have your wits about you and have a plan and make sure you've got the diagram in front of you all the whole time all right well all of that work now means we go into the spray booth for only like two or three minutes and the camo is painted so off I go Here we go, after all that work, all that effort, we can take the masks off. Because the masks actually aren't touching the paint, they shouldn't disturb the paint as long as we're careful. A little bit of ghosting will overspray in there, but I can touch that up with a brush. Um, generally, it's all pretty good. Tiny bit there. Those are all good. That's all good. That's all fine. That's all nice and sharp. The tiny bit there. The wing root's the hardest bit where you try and get the um, try and get the mask in. So that'll just be a little bit of touch up, 
and for some reason it seemed to sort of glow a little, sort of go a little bit off in there. That again, I can touch that up. I'll just just a little bit of a hand job in there. It'll be fine. That won't be hard at all. Or I can make up just a little mask and spray that. But basically, that's a lot better than I had before. <laughs> so that's um, that's how you do a um a floating mask. Yes. And there we go. That's it, basically. It's um, it's not bad. A little bit touching up, but um, it'll be fine. All that work was um, was worth it as far as I'm concerned. I've got a really nice little camo scheme here, and um, it's just a little bit of very careful, fine brushing, and I'll get a couple of those little bits of overspray. Um, tickety boo. All right, well, that's it then. I'll um, do the chipping in another video, and um, that'll include probably the full build of the Spitfire if you're interested. So that's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini.